Do you want to know how to use ClipChamp? Hey everyone, Paige here with ClipChamp and in this video today I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know to get started. On the screen here is a quick rundown of everything I'm going to cover in this video, but if you want to skip to specific sections, just check out the description below with the timestamps. Let's get started with how to sign up for free. So firstly, to sign up to ClipChamp, start by heading over to clipchamp.com and now either sign into your account or if you don't already have an account, hit try for free and then create your free account by following the prompts. I've put the link to sign up in the description below. Once you're logged in, you'll be taken to the homepage, which will look like this. Then to create a new video from scratch, hit the create a new video button, and then you'll be taken straight into the editor to get creating. Now, before jumping into the basics and our video editing tips and tricks, I'll do a quick rundown of the interface of the editor. Once you're inside your video project, firstly, in the middle here is the stage. This is where your video preview will be visible once your content is added in. At the bottom here is your timeline. This is where you'll add your content in. Over on the left is the toolbar. This is where you'll import your content and where your assets will be accessible. It's also where you can record your screen and camera, your audio, and where you can use text-to-speech. If you're not using your own content, the content library here houses all of our free stock. This includes stickers, music, shapes, videos, backgrounds, images, frames, borders, sound effects, overlays, and GIFs. If you're not starting from scratch, our free templates are available to access here. The text tab houses all of the free text animation options if you're adding text to your video. And you can also access transitions here. Lastly, the brand kit, which allows you to import your logo, your brand colors, and your brand fonts. Now, lastly, over on the right is the property panel. This is where you'll make adjustments and certain edits to your video and content. This can include changing the speed, color correction, adding effects and filters, and adding fades. But I will be getting into more detail throughout this tutorial. Next, I'll show you how to import your media and upload your content. The first thing to do is navigate over to the Import Media button, then select the files from your device and hit Open. Your content will upload into your media library over here. By clicking the drop down arrow, you can also import your media using one of our integrations. Once your media is all uploaded, to get editing, you'll add those assets into the timeline. Do this by dragging and dropping them in, just like this. You can also hit this green Add to Timeline button. If it has zoomed in a little bit too close, you can zoom in or out of your timeline by selecting the Zoom to Fit or Zoom In and Out buttons here. Now, if you're adding an audio, when you drag that audio into the timeline, make sure to place it below your video assets. Lastly, if you've added in something that you do want to remove, simply click on that asset. It will highlight in green so that you know which one you've selected. Then hit delete on your keyboard to remove it. Now, here's how you can resize, crop, and change the aspect ratio of your video. Now that the video is in the timeline, to resize your video, click on the asset in the timeline. Again, it will highlight in green so you know which one you've selected. This is important when you have multiple assets in your timeline. Now navigate up into the stage and then drag the corners either left or right to make it bigger or smaller. Then reposition it by moving it around the stage until you're happy with the placement. You can also rotate the video by dragging the rotate button just like this. Now, if you want to crop your video, head up into the floating toolbar and then click on the crop button. Now just drag the edges to your desired crop and then hit done. If you do want to revert that crop back to the original, just hit the revert button. Now if you have cropped or resized the video, you will notice these black edges have appeared. You can leave it like this if you'd like, but it isn't very aesthetic. So to make that video fill the whole canvas, again up in the floating toolbar, just hit the fit and fill buttons and it will zoom that into the full canvas. To make a few more adjustments, click on the three dots in the floating toolbar, and you can then either rotate your video by 90 degrees, flip it horizontally, flip it vertically, or make that into a picture-in-picture. -picture. I am just gonna change it back 
so it fills the whole canvas. Lastly, if you'd like to change the aspect ratio on your video, navigate to the right and click into the aspect ratio button. Here you can select any of the aspect ratio options depending on where you're posting your video. For example, I'll change mine to a 9x16 for social media stories. And then just making some adjustments as we did before to ensure that video fits the entire canvas. Now, if you've made any errors along the way, in the timeline, you can click the undo or redo buttons to revert those changes. You can also hit Command Z on your keyboard. Next, I'll be showing you how to split your video, trim it, speed it up or down and fade it in or out. Firstly, if you'd like to trim your video, for example, if the beginning or end is too long, click on that asset in the timeline and then move the front handle to the right to trim the beginning or move the end handle to the left to trim the end. If you've trimmed the beginning, a gap will appear. So to delete that, just hover over that gap and then click on the trash can icon. You can do the same with your audio by trimming it to match the length of your video so that everything is in sync. Now to speed your video up or down, select the asset, head over to the property panel and click into the speed tab. Now using the speed selector, you'll drag the slider left to slow the clip down or right to speed the clip up. You can choose between 0.1x all the way to 16x speed options. You can also enter in a specific value here in this box. Just type in the figure and then hit enter to action that change. You'll need to note that by editing the speed of your clip, you'll also be editing the length of the asset in your timeline. As you can see here, the faster the speed, the shorter the clip, and the longer the speed, the longer the video clip. Do the same with your audio clip if you've made any video speed adjustments to again ensure it's all in sync. Next, if you'd like to fade your video in or out, click on the asset, jump into the fade tab of the property panel, and then to fade it in, just drag the fade in slider, and to fade it out, drag the fade out slider. The numeric value will also change automatically with the video fade slider. Now, when you play your video back, you can see that fade in or fade out. Continue changing that fade level as needed until you're happy with what it looks like. Lastly, if you have sections of your video that you want to remove, you'll do this by splitting and cutting. So to split your video, move the seeker to the point of the video where you'd like the split to start. I use the timeline time code as a guide for this. For example, I've moved my seeker to around two seconds as this is the starting point of the video I want to remove. Now split the clip by navigating over to the split button or the scissors icon in the timeline. Just click on that to action the split. You can also simply hit the S key on your keyboard. Then drag the seeker to the point of the video you want the split to end, hit the split button and your video will be split into multiple clips. Now to remove that section of your video, click on the clip in the middle and hit delete on your keyboard. Now just remove that gap and your clips will move back into place. That section of your video will then be cut and removed. You can also trim, speed or fade any of the cut clips or your audio by following the same steps. Now to take your video to the next level, here's how to add some really cool transitions between your clips. When your videos are in the timeline, for this example, I've added in a few different videos to showcase the transitions. There are two ways you can add one. The first is to head into the toolbar and click into the transitions tab. Now just hover over the transitions for a preview of what they look like. When you found the one you want to use, drag and drop it into the timeline, placing it between the two clips on top of the plus button. Then head over to the right into the property panel. And now you can adjust the speed of that transition by dragging the slider left or right. Play that video back to check you're happy with the speed and look of the transition, and then just adjust the speed if you'd like to change it. If you don't like the transition you've selected, just click on another one in the transitions tab and it will automatically adjust. Now the second way to add a transition is to hover your cursor between two of the clips in the timeline, click on that plus button, and then as before, select your transition, adjust the duration and watch it back to make sure you're happy. 
We have a very big range of filters and effects, including animations. So here's how to apply them to your video. So to add a filter onto your video, click on the asset in your timeline and navigate over to the property panel. Click into the filters tab and you can now hover your cursor over all of the options. Just preview which one suits your video's aesthetic. When you've found the one you want to use, in this case, we're going with bold and blue, just click on that and it will apply the filter to your video. You can then adjust the intensity of the filter by dragging the intensity slider left or right until you're happy with the look of your video. To add an effect or animation to your video, you'll click on the effects tab here in the property panel. Now again, hover your cursor over the options and preview which one you'd like to use. Once you've found the one you want to use, in this case, we're going with pulse, simply click on it and it will apply that effect to your video. Now each effect will have different adjustment options. So just adjust the effects as you'd like by dragging the selected sliders. You can also add as many effects as you'd like to the video by clicking on the ones that you want and following the same steps. You'll know which ones are selected and applied as they will be selected in purple. To make things easier, if you'd like to add a filter or effect to all the clips at once, just hold the shift key on your keyboard and then select all of the clips you want. Then just choose your filter or effect and it will apply that effect or filter to all the clips at the same time. By playing your video back, you can now see all of the changes you've made. You can change those filters and effects as many times as you'd like until you're completely happy with the look of your video. In this section of the tutorial, I'll show you how you can add text to your video and how you can edit that text. To start, navigate over to the toolbar and click into the text tab. Here you'll find all of the available text and title options. Just scroll through all of the options and hover over each one for a preview of the text motion and text style. Then when you found the one you want to use, you'll drag and drop that text into the timeline, placing it on top of your video asset. If you end up changing your mind on the text you've selected, just drag and drop another text style into your timeline, placing it on top of that old text bar and dropping it in to replace it. Now, if you want the text showing throughout your whole video, you'll drag the end handle of that text bar to the end of your video. Otherwise, just trim it to the point you want it to disappear. You can also drag that text bar across your timeline to appear at a specific section of your video. For this example though, I am going to keep the text across the whole video. Now to edit and customize your text, if you've used the plain text option, you'll edit the text in the stage here. But if you've used another text option, for example, Groovy, you'll edit the text in the property panel. Just click on the text bar in the timeline, then navigate to the property panel and click into the text tab. Here you can edit what the text says, change the font, the size, the colors and the position. Firstly, to change what the text reads, jump into the text box here and then just type out what you'd like it to say. Next, to change the font, click into the font drop down button and scroll through all of the options. Just simply click on the one that you want and it will automatically adjust. You can do this as many times as you'd like until you're happy with the look of the text. Then to adjust the size of the font, just drag the size slider left or right like this. You can also navigate into the video preview and drag the handles in or out to make it bigger or smaller. Then just place the text anywhere you'd like on the video preview by moving it around. Lastly, to change the text color, you'll click into the color button and either choose from a default color option or jump into the HSV color picker and have a play around for something more specific. There also is the option to enter in a specific color code here. Lastly, let's look at everything you need to know about our AI text-to-speech generator. Head over to the record and create tab of the toolbar and then you'll click the text-to-speech button. Now navigate over to the property panel and here you can create an AI voiceover for your video from over 80 different languages. Just click the drop-down arrow of the language tab and scroll through all of the options. Then just click the one that you want to use throughout your AI voiceover. There are hundreds of unique voices to choose from, ranging from neutral, feminine, masculine, and even AI generated. Just click the voice drop-down box to select one, 
and then hit the hear this voice button for a preview of what it sounds like. In the advanced settings tab, you can create further customizations. Now the voice you've selected will have a default pitch, but you can adjust the pitch here to extra low, low, medium, high, or extra high. You can then adjust the pace, speeding it either up or down by dragging the slider left or right. Lastly, in the text box here, you'll type out your AI voiceover. If you've hit the character limit on your script and you need a longer voiceover, just create multiple voiceovers following the same steps. Now, once your script is typed in, hear a preview of what it sounds like by clicking the preview button. Then just make any further adjustments to the voice, pitch and pace if needed. And once completed, hit save and it will save into your video. Now just move it into place. For example, I'll place mine at the start of my video and then you'll have a perfectly generated AI voiceover. The very last thing you need to know is how to export your completed video to your device. Once you've completed editing your video and you're happy with the way it looks, to export it to your device or to save it to one of our integrations, you'll navigate over to the export button, then out of the options, select your video quality. Your video will then begin to export. A copy of your video will automatically save to your device. But if you'd like to save it directly to one of our integrations, you'll find them all over here on the left of the export page. And that is everything you need to know to get started with ClipChamp. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for our weekly how-to videos.